video. Welcome to my channel. This is our, I guess, our, our first lesson <laughs> in the uh, Learn Astrology or Astrology Studies series. So I'm going to talk about the signs of the zodiac. So you probably know there are 12 signs of the zodiac. Most people know their sun sign in Western astrology. But what is the zodiac? Let's start with that. So up in the sky, <laughs> there are many, many, I don't know, trillions, of stars out there. The zodiac is a specific belt of stars that from our perspective here on earth, all the planets, including the sun and the moon travel through in the sky. So the best like visual I can give you guys for that is, so I have this old globe that was my grandmother's. Here's the earth. So with astrology, we're at the center. There is a heliocentric system of astrology. It's not very commonly used. Usually, you know, the earth is at the center and it's what we observe going around us from here on earth. So it's called geocentric. That's Western or Vedic astrology. Um, so here's the earth, right? So in the stand here, I have to take that out, keep it from falling. You will see the zodiac. So we have Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer. Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. So we have the Zodiac, and this is the best representation I can give you, that goes that in the sky is a belt somewhat like this around the Earth. So from our perspective, the planets all move through that belt of constellations. So the Zodiac the zo, zoos, like zoo, is Greek for, for life, so animals, right? Most of them are animals, right? Not all of them, but most of them. Um, and it's a belt of constellations that we from Earth, again, observe the planets, including the sun and moon, sun and moon move through. Okay, so that's what the zodiac is, and it, it's comprised of these 12 signs of the zodiac. Now, if you haven't seen it or you want to review it, I did do a video. Um, it was really about, you know, is it is it necessary to reconcile the zodiac? So there's the tropical zodiac, the Western astrology system, most common, the sidereal zodiac, which is the Vedic system. Um, and then there's a constellational zodiac. Um, so if you want to go learn a little bit more, it's just, it was really wasn't a video about the zodiacs. It was about is it necessary to reconcile them? But if you want to know a little bit more about those, uh, that will be linked below. Okay, but in general, most astrologers, most commonly used around the world is the, those 12 signs of the zodiac. So the 12 signs in astrology. Okay, so what are they? Well, first for learning the 12 signs, the signs, also the planets, even the houses, um, what can help, or at least kind of how I organize it in my mind, and of course tweak it for you, is to come up with three keywords that encompass what that house or sign or planet symbolizes. Uh, there are many, many things. I mean, you can Google search like, what does Aries represent? You can get this huge long, long list. But many of those things can sort of be summed up into a similar category. So that can be a helpful tool with studying. Now, for those of you who are specifically wanting to learn Vedic astrology, you may already know this. I do have a Vedic astrology study deck and a Vedic astrology oracle that you can purchase. Those will all be linked below. Um, and my book, where is it? Oh, it's under a stack here. And my book, Shedding Light on Jyotisha, Vedic Astrology for Beginners. So if you wanna want some tools, to go along with these videos I'm making, those, of course, would be great ones to use since they're tools I made, but you don't have to get those, of course. Um, but what I did in those, so I have my study deck here, is I put three keywords. And just because as a teacher, and I've taught everyone from preschoolers to college students to adults over my lifetime, um, since the 90s, uh, various topics, various subjects, is to help organize the studies that way. And then you can expand upon it. Because if, let's say you Google search Aries, right? The sign of Aries. And what does that mean? And you find this like long list and 
all sorts of stuff that could be kind of daunting. Like, how am I supposed to remember all these things that Aries represents? Um, so summarize it into three keywords. So like here, for example, in my deck for Aries, I put, pick the words ambitious, passionate, idealistic. Those may not be the key, three keywords you come up with, um, right? So do what makes sense for you. That helps you kind of get get the fuller picture of what a zodiac sign represents. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Um, and I would just so you guys know, I, at some point or here and there, I'll do a live so people can actually ask questions um, on videos I've done or what they're just trying to figure out in astrology. So that can be get some interactive energy going with these two because it's just me talking to the camera right so the 12 signs of the zodiac um, in the western astrology system the first sign well the first sign in both systems is aries so western and vedic aries is the first sign of the zodiac in western astrology because it's set up to work with the equinoxes and solstices aries always begins at the vernal or spring equinox in the northern hemisphere so March 20, 21, 22 ish, depending on the year. And that depends on the calculations, right? <laughs> Which actual day it is. That's why it's not always these, the same day. It's not always March 20th. Sometimes it's March 22nd. All depends on the astronomical calculations that are then converted to the astrological calculations. Um, in Vedic astrology, the sign of Aries starts like three and a half, three and a half weeks before that, <laughs> um, because Vedic astrology takes into account the actual placement of the stars at a given moment in time, and the fact that they move retrograde one degree every 72 years. So more on that, if you haven't checked it out, check out my video on Western astrology versus Vedic astrology, where I go into the major differences between the two systems. Okay, but the order of the zodiac signs in, in this belt, as I showed there, um, Aries, number one, Taurus, two, three, Gemini, four, Cancer, five, Leo, six, Virgo, seven, Libra, eight, Scorpio, nine, Sagittarius, 10, Capricorn, 11, Aquarius, and 12, Pisces. And it will be helpful to remember the order and the number that the sign is, because that's gonna be helpful in like, like quickly picking stuff up. And I'll get to that later when I talk about, you know, looking at the, the basic numerology of one through nine, um, but also correlating it to house and stuff, but we'll get to that. So it can be helpful to say, oh, the first sign is Aries, the second sign is Taurus. Um, and always like writing the number down if you're like taking notes with this and writing things out or you have your chart pulled up and there are many free online calculators. Um, so you should be easily be able to find one. Um, and just writing, you know, one colon Aries, two colon Taurus every time you do it. So it's it's quick in your mind at some point. It will take some time to know what number sign, zodiac sign you're referen referencing with its name. Um, so again, that's going to help later on. So let's talk a little bit about the zodiac signs. As I talk, I think of like, oh, and then I'll need to talk about this. Oh, and that. <laughs> so if I pause, it's because I have these thoughts like, oh, yeah, and this and that. OK, so the first sign is Aries, first sign of the zodiac. Um, the energy of Aries often wants to be the best. So I should also mention, if you're not for, not aware of this, in everybody's chart, in a chart for a location, in a chart for anything, there are all 12 signs of the zodiac. So Aries could be someone's first house, the house or the sign that their son is in, or you know their house of career. It all just depends on every chart. But Aries has an energy of first, wanting to be first. And I think I said ambitious on my Vedic cards, right? Ambitious, wanting to be the best, um, competitive energy, uh, go-getter energy. So Aries is ruled by the planet Mars, and that's important to know the planetary rulers of the signs, both Vedic and Western astrology, more strongly focused on in Vedic, but important in Western as well, uh, because it tells you more about the energy of the sign. Um, we'll get into the planets soon, so I don't wanna like jump ahead. <laughs> it's hard to do, because I have like 
everything kind of interacts, right? Um, so Aries like wants to be the best, wants to be number one, wants to do their best, go-getter, ambitious, competitive, you know, depending on how the Mars influence the ruler of Aries is in someone's chart, it could be someone it could be combative, you know, it can have combative energy. Just think of Ram, so the symbol, right? And I'll probably put a picture of the symbol up here or something. The symbol is the Ram. And what do we think of Rams? We think of the horns. That's what the symbol is, right? We think of the horns and butting heads. So it, it can be, you know, one competitive, but it could be engaging in conflict so it can have a conflicting energy <laughs> that doesn't sound right um combative energy as well um and aries as the first sign of the zodiac and you will see when i get to the houses the sign number and the house number so first sign aries and first house have similar energies because Aries is the natural first house. Okay, more when we get into the houses. <laughs> um, so Aries has that number one energy, can also be self-centered, and that can be both positive or it could be negative or it's selfish and the ram butting heads with people and creating conflict, right? And I wanna point out here, now that I thought of it, everything in astrology, the signs, the houses, the planets, and everything else we might get to because this series you know could go on for years <laughs> if we just keep going and going and going um has both positive and negative aspects some signs some planets etc are considered more benefic that's usually the term used or good and or more auspicious and others are considered malefic or bad but they're not all good or all bad. There are positive and negative to all. And I think I mentioned this in the first video, I think, um, that a, a lot of it is how you look at it and how you choose to work with and use the astrology for your own benefit, for the opportunities that it can show you. Okay. Um, Okay, so that's Aries. The second sign is Taurus. So Taurus is, Taurus's symbol is the bull. Um, it's, oh, I should mention, backtrack. <laughs> um, Aries is a fire sign, um, so the element of it. And of course, we'll do a video on the elements too. Um, but just take note, Aries is a fire sign. Uh, so number two, Taurus. Taurus is an earth sign, and it goes in that order. It will go in the same order. So fire, earth, air, water, fire, earth, air, water, fire, earth, air, water, through the zodiac. Um, okay, backtrack again. Aries is number one, fire. I'm going to hold off on that. I'll get to that in the elements. <laughs> suspense. You're stuck in suspense there. Okay, Taurus, second sign of the zodiac, an earth sign. Taurus is ruled by Venus. Um, Taurus, because of earth energy, is more grounded, right? So just think of the bull or bovines. But, you know, the symbol, show the symbol here. The symbol has the horns, right? Like the bull, not necessarily the cow, right? Um, but it's bovine energy, very earthy energy, very, um, because it's ruled by Venus. And of course, we haven't gotten to the planets yet, but if you're watching this later, you can just hop around to videos. Um, brings in that kind of sensual, luxurious energy. So the Venus energy ruling it combined with the earth energy of Taurus. Um, bulls can be bullish, right? <laughs> um, I don't often associate bully energy with Taurus because of Venus, the ruler, but that's a possibility. Again, every chart is different. And so every reading, every interpretation has its different qualities to it. And then of course, every astrologer is going to have their own nuances and things they notice in a reading. Um, so if you're studying your own chart, and most of you, I'm guessing, are studying your own chart first, which is good. Oh, and studying your own chart, as well as the charts of family members, close friends, people you know a lot about is really helpful to study astrology because you can look at the charts and see how it relates to events in their life or their personality 
or whatever, or what they do for a living or the relationships. It helps to learn and study because you have the information, the facts to check your analysis. Um, and of course, your own chart, your own life is what you know most, right? Yours, your, your partner or your parents, or your siblings or a lifelong best friend, things like that. Um, so where was I? Taurus. <laughs> Obviously, these are not scripted. Um, yeah, so it has a very grounded, earthy, sensual type of energy. Personally, as an astrologer, I often associate like comforty things associated with Taurus energy. Uh, we think of springtime usually, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, cooking, baking, creative energy because Venus is the ruler. So those are the things I think of with Taurus. Uh, let me see what I put here. Yeah, creative, sensual, and nurturing. And the the uh, even though this is my Vedic astrology study deck, um, these this similar meanings, almost the same meanings, but there's some little nuances there apply to both Western and Vedic astrology. I just have this, so that's what I'm using as a as a visual. Um, so the third sign is Gemini. So air. So remember fire, earth air, water. Uh, Gemini is ruled by the planet Mercury. Um, uh, Gemini energy, so the symbol is the twins. And so with Gemini energy, there can be like two sides to things. Sometimes it often like in, indicates indecisiveness. And that could be in a certain area in someone's life, or if it's their ascendant or sun sign or moon sign, the personality in some way. Um, it can be seen because, right, positive and negative, looking at things from two sides, the ability to use both right and left brain, or again, unable to make a decision because it's like, oh, this or this or this or that. Um, it can kind of on the more negative sense indicate like two-faced, but that's usually indecision that makes someone seem like they're one way this way and one way the next. Um, but it can be balanced too. It could be like left brain and light, right brain, bringing things together. It's an air sign. It's ruled by Mercury. It's very intellectual, like Gemini energy. I think of book clubs and reading newspapers and I guess researching things online, really sort of like wanting to talk about things like, yeah, someone who likes to get together with friends and talk about an article they read in a newspaper or online. Are there newspapers still? I think so. <laughs> so in my deck here, I use the word intellectual, intellectual, changeable, and inquisitive. Those are the three keywords I chose. I remember when I was putting this deck together, it was really hard to pick the three keywords, but it's a, it's a helpful tool. Okay, so the fourth sign of the zodiac is cancer, water sign. Cancer is ruled by the moon. Um, so water energy is very much associated with emotions as well as intuition. Uh, cancer specifically is associated with nurturing and mother energy, though it's not like other signs can't, like Taurus can have that energy as well. Um, but Cancer is considered a very nurturing sign, uh, very emotional, uh, besides the water, <laughs> um, and the symbol being the crab. Uh, with the moon rulership, which represents changeability, um, cancer energy can have lots of sh like emotional shifts and changes. Um, that could be good, that could be bad, it just depends on the situation and the chart you're reading, right? So the keywords I picked on for my deck were motherly, dreamy, and intuitive. Okay, um, yeah, so the fifth sign is Leo. Uh, Leo is a fire sign, so we're our next, our next four, uh, four, four section, our next third <laughs> of the grouping of elements. So Leo is a fire sign ruled by the sun. Um, the sun is also fiery. So Leo is a lot of fiery energy, is a very creative sign, um, very, um, because its ruler is the sun, it can be very strongly soul driven. That doesn't mean people of other signs aren't soul driven, um, but that sun energy, which represents the soul, the individual soul, um, is usually pretty fired up in Leo energy. Again, it depends on the chart because there's other things that can come into play that enhance it, decrease it, limit it, etc. 
Um, so very creative energy, um, very um, dynamic energy. Leo energy appears extroverted because it shines, right? That sun energy. But Leonine energy is actually somewhat private, which is really interesting. It's sort of this uh, introvert, extrovert energy opposition, sort of. But it Leo energy appears bright. So like someone's, you know, 10th house of career could be the sign of Leo. And so they really shine in their career, depending on where the sun is placed, of course. Um, but otherwise, they're very quiet and introverted. So again, it depends on the chart. So the keywords I chose for Leo on my deck were leader, leader in passion. That's all that fiery energy, fire is passion and energetic. Okay. The next sign, the sixth sign of the zodiac is Virgo. So Virgo is earth because again, fire, earth, air, water. <laughs> um, I have to always have to pause because that's not how I normally recite the elements in my head. So Virgo is an earth, earth sign of the zodiac. Um, it's ruled by Mercury as well. Um, again, Mercury rules Gemini as well as Virgo. Um, which for some who know the planets, because Mercury is very kind of airy, um, may seem weird. Um, and there are some kind of modern ideas of different asteroids ruling Virgo, such as Chiron. Um, but that's that would be like down the road type of thing to explore and talk about. So we have Mercury, intellectual, Mercury represents the intellectual mind. I should mention that, but I haven't done the planets video yet. Um, ruling earthy Virgo, Virgo, the time of the harvest. Um, and it can have very harvest energy. Uh, Virgo is a sign of, I was going to say nurturing, but it's more like healing energy um, because it does represent the harvest time. Uh, the symbol is the maiden, right? Oh, I should. I think you know this, but Leo, the sign is the, the symbol is the lion. Um, the harvest maiden, maiden um, if you know the mythology of Persephone and Demeter, um, she, you know, the symbolism ties into that, but it's not necessary, necessary to know. Um, so it's, it's grounded, not sensuous, like earthly, earthy Taurus, um, more like producing, producing things. It's not creative like Leo. <laughs> I have all these thoughts going through my head now. Um, but it's about the harvest production and that influences health. It can be a sign to look at for food stuff, food issues, or someone loves food, um, health and healing. And then the mercury energy coming in um, organized. So just think of like, you know, having a garden or a farm, like you kind of have to organize and plan things out. So Virgo has this very um, meticulous energy to it. And that can be very positive. That can be very negative and turn into something like being obsessed about something. Okay. So the keywords I put on my cards for Virgo are meticulous, indecisive. That's some of the mercury energy and sensitive. Okay. The seventh sign of the zodiac is Libra. The symbol is the scale. So this is one that's not a living creature. Um, it's the only one, not a living creatures, living creature. <laughs> um, Libra is an air sign. Libra is also ruled by Venus. Venus again rules Taurus as well. So just think of the scales. You know, really everything makes sense. It's kind of intuitive. You just have to realize it. Like the scales, Libra is about seeking balance. It doesn't autom if someone, you know, says I'm a Libra, it doesn't mean you're automatically balanced in everything in your life. It usually means you're seeking to find balance and you, 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 you prefer balance in things. So balance, you could think of like the justice card in tarot. Uh, the Venus energy does bring in some creative energy, some beauty energy. I found from doing, I don't know, thousands of readings that people who are Libras, especially Libra rising or Libra ascendant, and I'll interchange those terms. Uh, I tend to say rising for Western and ascendant for Vedic, but for these, I'll interchange the terms, um, tend to be very um, into the arts or artistic or love to have lots of art around them. Um, or it could be how they dress and do their hair or makeup and all that stuff. 
So yeah, okay, so the keywords I, I put on my cards for Libra are fashionable, artsy, and seeking balance. Okay, so our eighth sign of the zodiac is Scorpio. Scorpio is our next water sign. The other one was Cancer. The symbol is the scorpion. Um, Scorpio is one of those that has multiple other symbols. Of course, it's called Scorpio, so we think of the scorpion. Eagle is one that is common, commonly used. I believe also salamander and the phoenix. Um, I think also a dragon. But usually if it's not the Scorpio, you might see the eagle. Um, like in tarot cards, like on the world card, um, it will have the four fixed signs, um, which one of them is Scorpio. And then we'll get to a video on the fixed signs and stuff. I don't want to overload <laughs> too much in one video because this is already longer than I thought it would be. Um, it, there's an eagle and that represents Scorpio. And you'll see that in religious art as well when they have the four, the, well, the four, well, it's the four fixed signs of the zodiac represented by the um, by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay, so Scorpio, eighth sign of the zodiac, a water sign. So when it comes to the water signs, this is one way I see it, and you may not see it this way, but to really get the energy of the water signs, you can think of, or at least I think of Cancer as freshwater, lakes, rivers. Um, Scorpio as swampy waters or muddy waters and Pisces, which we'll get to as ocean or salt water. So Scorpio as the muddy murky waters. Scorpio is a sign that represents, um, you could say the underworld, but it represents death and transformation, um, secrets, things that are buried that you can't see like muddy water. You can't see clearly into muddy water. Um, Scorpio can be, um, I think a lot of people like, I don't know, common ideas of Scorpio is deceptive and highly sexual. Um, but that doesn't mean every Scorpio, everyone who's, everyone who's a Scorpio out there is like that, but that's because of the murkiness, the, the, you can't see them clearly because of the muddy water and in some cases it may be intentional but usually it's in unintentional it's just the their scorpionic ways <laughs> they're mysterious mysterious is a good word for the sign of scorpio and that again it depends on where it would lay on your chart what planets are there but we'll get to that so the keywords i used for scorpio are tenacious deeply emotional because of the water energy right and transformative The next sign, ninth sign, is Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the archer um, or the bow and arrow. So usually the symbol, yeah, the bow and arrow. Um, so you could, whether you see it as the archer <laughs> or the or the bow and arrow, <laughs> um, you could see it as, as a living being or not, right? So Sagittarius. Just think of the arrow, right? Far shooting, lots of ideas. Hey, let's do this. So I have this idea. I want to go there. So to me, it has very explorator, ex explorer energy, exploratory energy, adventuresome energy, um, kind of go-getter energy. It's a fire sign. <laughs> so that fire, right? Fire is, heats things up. Let's get things going. And I just want to bounce like this for Scorpio energy. Like, hey, let's do this. Or I have this idea. This isn't this great. Or I want to go travel there. So Scorpio is a sign of travel, exploration, yeah, ideas. What did I put as my keywords? Philosophical, explorer, and restless. Oh yeah, that's why I was bouncing. That restless energy, like, oh, let's do this, let's do that. So for someone who is a Scorpio or strong Scorpio energy to be stuck is like your worst nightmare. <laughs> okay, um, 10th sign of the zodiac is Capricorn. So now we're earth again. So remember fire, earth, air, water. And I'll get more into that when we talk about the elements. Um, I hope this isn't too much at once. I was thinking if I should break it up. but um, So Capricorn, earth element. To me, it's the densest earth, if that makes any sense at all. So Taurus, I see, is like blossoming, growing earth, plants, gardens, lushness. Uh, Virgo is the harvest, what you reap. 
you know, the organization involved in that. And Capricorn is like dense earth, maybe because it's in the Northern Hemisphere, the start of, it starts at the winter solstice in Western astrology. Three-ish weeks off from there in Vedic. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to make a video on that too. Okay. Um, but it's very sturdy, right? So just think of frozen ground in the winter. It's hard. It's sturdy. It's It doesn't budge, right? The symbol of Capricorn is usually just thought of as the goat, but um, it has the tail. This is the in Vedic. It's really crocodile but um most people think of the goat but it's really a goat fish and fish is water right same thing oh interesting um but usually the goat energy is what is stressed or most commonly associated with capricorn and that's stubbornness sturdiness solidly groundedness capricorn energy is hard working um keeps going and going and going and going sometimes to its detriment okay so capricorn the three keywords i picked are disciplined structured and stubborn and i just realized i've skipped over the rulers so capricorn is ruled by saturn i'm gonna backtrack i did leo i did virgo libra scorpio i forgot you scorpio is ruled by mars um in Vedic astrology and in Western astrology, Pluto, once Pluto was discovered, still considered a planet in this sense, <laughs> um, is the modern ruler of Scorpio um, and Jupiter rules Sagittarius. So Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. And again, the keywords are disciplined, structured and stubborn. OK, our 11th sign of the zodiac is Aquarius. So our last air sign, um, the symbol of Aquarius is the water bearer. So the person carrying the pitcher, like Vedic astrology, it's actually the pitcher, um, but the water bearer or a man, right? Pouring, carrying the water, pouring the water. Um, and that the, the idea that it's a man or a human being um, is, is significant with what Aquarius represents, which is the humanitarian sign. The people helping the people carrying water for the people you can see it that way um, humanity working together caring for humanity this can also be animals in the planet etc so strong humanitarian energy and it's it's a social sign so people right people social life friends who you hang out with who you associate with it's all that kind of energy now in a very modern sense uh, the sign of Aquarius um has been given uh like internet things like facebook things where you socialize online in a modern sense i somewhat agree with that depends on the chart and what the third and 11th houses look like but we'll get into the houses i think next okay um air sign oh aquarius the traditional ruler is saturn so that's the ruler in vedic astrology um in a modern sense, it's Uranus. Uranus, once he was discovered, <laughs> was given to rule Aquarius. So you could say the rulers are Saturn traditionally and Aquar or, and Uranus. Okay. And Uranus has that unexpected energy, but we'll talk, we'll get to the planets. Um, so the words I put on my deck, my three keywords that I chose are humanitarian, nonconformist, and rebel. Um, in a modern sense, that is also the Uranus energy, but it's already there traditionally because this is Vedic astrology, right? Um, and I think that's why Uranus was was given once discovered to rule over Aquarius because of that energy. Nothing's by accident. OK, it's all well thought out. Astrology, if you haven't picked it up already or aware of it already, is very logical. And systematic. But when it's like, you know, nothing about it and like, say you listen to horoscopes and you're like, why are they, you know, it just seems like people are just pulling things out of their out of the hat or something. Um, it makes sense. Right. So it's just learning the pieces to put together for it to make sense. I hope that makes sense. OK, 
Oh, as always, just leave questions below. And if I don't answer them there, depending on what they are and how they come in, I'll get to them in subsequent videos. Okay, our 12th sign of the zodiac, our last sign of the zodiac is a water sign, Pisces. Um, again, salty water. I don't have a system like that for the air signs and fire signs exactly like I do with water and kind of with earth, but that's just my own little way of thinking of it. You may come up with your own, use mine or not, throw it away, whatever. Okay, so the 12th sign, the last sign of the zodiac is Pisces, the deep ocean waters, water representing emotions, intuition, as well as our psyche. So Pisces is like deep in our psyche, our subconscious, the collective unconscious, so the unconscious of the collective of people on earth, and the collective unconscious, which many associate with God or the universe or the Akashic records, um, what is beyond the human realm, right? So it's all that deep, deep stuff. It's, it's our psychology, our emotional wounds, um, and it's anything in those realms, like the dream time and yeah, astral traveling and, you know, active imagination and all sorts of things like that. Um, oh, yeah. So <laughs> the symbol for Pisces is the two fish, not one fish, two fish. Uh, so you'll see the symbol of two fishes, two fish, two fishes, two fish <laughs> swimming. Um, usually almost like in the yin yang symbol. Like that, I'll try to get some pictures up, we'll see. Uh, I never know how I'm gonna edit till I start editing. So I don't know if you see a green screen thing or not, I haven't decided. Um, two fish, water sign, Pisces. Traditional ruler is Jupiter. So it's Jupiter in Vedic astrology. And the modern ruler, once he was discovered, was Neptune. And I believe so, Pluto was discovered in the 1920s and then it's like, in the 1800s was Uranus, and I believe, I mean, 1800s was Neptune, and 1700s was Uranus, because I, I remember it as one per century. Uh, you can look up the exact dates, I don't know them. Okay, so the modern ruler of Pisces is Neptune. Okay, so the keywords I put on my cards are psychic, empathic, and mysterious, because those deep ocean waters, just think of like in real life, we don't know all that's down there still. We may never know all that's down there. Okay, so those are the 12 signs of the zodiac. I hope this wasn't too long. I guess you can pause it and come back, right? <laughs> I just don't want to put too much in one video because everything's so connected and, and it's like, how do how I, I think about how to break it down in increments that build upon each other without it becoming too too much and too intertwined at once. So let me know how how I'm doing, <laughs> if I'm explaining things okay. Questions below and depending on how many questions come in and how much I might just do a video answering them at some point. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, but I can definitely see this, you know, this isn't just a month long thing. This could go on for, for years, <laughs> really, if we really get into everything and and expand upon it and then get into like the healing and the magical systems of each system. It could go on and on. Okay. I will stop rambling here. <laughs> uh, check out links below for videos, tools, if you want them, what have you. Thank you for being here. Share this with friends who you feel want to learn astrology and I'll see you back here soon.